Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a different circuit, same type of problem as the previous video, but a different circuit. We still have a capacitor and an inductor in the circuit, but in this case we have a current source instead of a voltage source. So we're sending 12 amps through the circuit. Now what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor at steady state. We're trying to find the energy stored in the inductor and the energy stored in the capacitor at steady state as well. Again, what we do is we draw the equivalent circuit, replacing the capacitor by an open and the inductor by a short, because at steady state, there's no opposition to the current here, so it's like a short circuit, and at steady state, there's no current flowing through the capacitor, so therefore it's like an open circuit. So this can now be drawn as follows. We still have our 12 amp current source. We have, well, this now will become a short instead of the inductor and this will become an open instead of the capacitor. We still have a 6 ohm resistor here, and we still have a 2 ohm resistor over here. All right, so what we should do is we should try to calculate the current flow through this branch and the current flow through this branch. So we can find the current through this branch, let's call this I sub 1, and let's call this I sub 2. And this here is of course I, which is equal to the 12 amps. So in other words, I sub 1 is equal to the total current I times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch divided by the total resistance. So it would be 2 divided by 6 plus 2. In this case, that would be 12 amps times the ratio of 2 divided by 8, which is 1 quarter, one quarter of 12 amps is equal to 3 amps. So 3 amps will be flowing through the 6 ohm resistor. And I2 is equal to I times the ratio of the resistance of the other branch divided by the total resistance. So this would be 6 divided by 6 plus 2, which is again 12 amps, times the ratio of 6 divided by 8, which is 3 quarters of that, which is equal to 9 amps. In other words, 9 amps will flow through this branch, and 2 amps will flow through this branch, which means that the current through here is the same as the current through there, I2, which means we can then conclude that I sub L is equal to I sub 2, which is equal to 9 amps. So we've answered one of the four questions. We know the current through the inductor. Now we need to know the voltage across the capacitor. Now the voltage across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage across this branch right here. We can see what the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor is. The voltage across the 2 ohm resistor is equal to the current through there, which is I2 times the resistance, and that is equal to the current I2 is equal to 9 amps, 9 amps times the resistance, which is equal to 2 ohms, which is equal to 18 volts, which is the voltage across the capacitor. So now we have the second question answered. Next, we need to find the energy stored in the inductor. And that is equal to 1 half times the inductance times the current squared. Now we have the current through the inductor. We have that right here. So this is equal to 1 half times L, which is 2 Henry's, times the inductance, uh, the current through inductance squared, which is 9 squared. These cancel out, and that gives us 81 and the energy is joules, 81 joules of energy stored on the inductor. What about the energy stored on the capacitor? Well, that is equal to one-half the capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor, which is equal to one-half times the capacitance is a half a ferret, times the voltage squared. The voltage is 18 volts, so that's 18 squared, which is equal to and let's grab the calculator. We got 18 squared divided by 4 gives us 81 joules as well. Kind of interesting that the energy across the uh, inductor or the energy stored in the inductor is the same as the energy stored in the capacitor. And so that's how we analyze the circuit like that. Again, the key is to take the inductor in a steady state, which turns into a short, and the capacitor turns into an open again in steady state condition. And that's how it's done.